The following broadcast is brought to you by the friends and partners of Revival Ministries International. Father, let every ear be anointed to hear. Let every heart receptive receive all that you have for them. This day we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I felt to continue this morning on looking at the ministry of Jesus and really understanding the ministry of Jesus because amazing when you deal with as many ministers as what we do, that you come to the realization, the fact that many don't understand what he really was about. And you say, well, how can you say that? Because you hear about what they say. Well, Jesus wouldn't do that. But yet, if you go and study the gospels, you find out exactly what he, what he would do because you see it there. Plus, we know that at the end of the Gospel of John said all these miracles that Jesus do and all the others that if were written down, I do not even suppose the books of the world will contain them. So there's archives of manuscripts and things I believe we'll get when we get to the other side. I'm going to, for one, play all those virtual reality tapes and watch them all just because I'm inquisitive, see all of the other stuff he did. Are you with me? But what we have in the Word is sufficient. What we have in the Word. And that's why I wrote this book, Seeing Jesus as It Really Is. Uh, we do give it away at the end of the program today. It's, it's more of the, the paperback version. This was a redone where I actually put all the scriptures within the body of the text of the book so you could see it. But his whole ministry... 70% of the life and ministry on the earth that Jesus accomplished was healing the sick and casting out devils. That mandate has been extended towards the church because the church are the representation of Jesus in the earth today. You are his hands, you are his feet, and you are his mouthpiece. Say this after me, I am his hands. I am his feet, I am his mouthpiece. So he wants to use you and remember this, to people out in a lost and dying world, you're the only Jesus that they'll ever see. So when somebody comes who knows who they are in Christ, when somebody shows up and they know what the word of God says and they begin to do the works of Jesus, because he said, these works shall he do, and greater works than these shall he do. Everybody say, these works. works. Well, you need to see what these are, and then greater works. In essence, there's a greater work happening right now by the reason of the fact that we're going live to millions and millions of homes at one time. That's something that Jesus never got to do. So we're living in an hour where greater works can be accomplished, where you can reach more people in a moment than you could have reached in five years. Now, last week we looked at several passages from the Gospel of Mark. And I'll read the first passage just to recap for those that were not here last Sunday, but I encourage you to go get that message. You can see it on the Rodney Brown YouTube and watch it. But in verse 40 of chapter one, there came a leper to him, beseeching him and kneeling down to him saying, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus said, no, I'm not going to clean you. 
What does the CDC have to say? No. Jesus moved with compassion. Say this off to me. Jesus moved with compassion. Put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. As soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And he straightly charged him, and forthwith sent him away. And he said, See thou say nothing to any man. Now this doesn't make sense. Why would Jesus tell him not to say one word to anybody else? But remember, he was a leper. And you're not supposed to have any contact with leprosy or lepers. And so that meant you could be contagious, you know what I'm saying? Talk about quarantine. But he said, go your way, show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing those things which Moses commanded for testimony unto them. But he went out and began to publish it much and to blaze abroad the matter insomuch that Jesus could no more go openly into the city because everybody knew that he'd been with lepers. Which you can see that divide coming now People won't be able to go into a city because you haven't been vaccinated. You can see the same kind of situation happening. Inasmuch as Jesus could no more enter into the city, but he was without in the desert, and they came to him from every quarter. And I said this to you last week, that in essence, this is like being a desert, although it's not, it's an oasis here, right here in Hillsborough County, with the pavilion where people can come from all over, the healing school, the university, and people can come here with no restraint and no one can stop us. Are you with me? And so Jesus then could just go out where he was and people just found him wherever. If he was out in the desert place, they came. People followed him. Wherever they heard Jesus was, they followed, they found out. The moment people begin to see the hand of God, miracles, signs and wonders, they'll find out where you are. They're going to come to your house. They're going to knock on your door. I remember coming home. We live in the middle of a forest. I come home from church on a Monday morning early, like 1.30 in the morning. Because, you know, when we, I live an hour away, and so we finish Sunday night, sometimes 11, 11.30. It probably was a camp day. I can't remember what it was, but it was late by the time I got home. And we pulled up. And I got out of the car, and if you, if you look down towards the river, there's a gazebo there, but it's totally dark, and there's forest. So you can't really see what's going on on the other side. And I heard a voice, um, sir, sir. So I start walking down towards the river. And I said, yes. <laughs> and they said, are you a pastor? I said, yes. I said, what's the problem? I need prayer. I can't see anybody. It's like in a total pitch darkness there. I need prayer. My wife is here with me. We're not well. This is, could have been eight years ago, nine years ago. I can't remember now. But so I said, okay, well, have you given your life to the Lord? Yeah, we have. Well, we're not really serving him, you know, properly. And I said, well, let's pray right now. So I'm praying. I've got a river between us. There's a river between us, okay? And so they in the bush, I can't see what they are. It doesn't really matter. And I lead them in the prayer, dear Lord Jesus, um, I you know, recommit my life to you today. And they're praying with me and we finished praying. Okay, okay, now we're gonna pray for you to be healed in your body. <laughs> so then I pray, Father, I pray that you touch them, that you heal them right now, that you set them free. How the enemy is broken, and in Jesus' name, amen. And they said, amen, and everybody was happy. And I said, well, look, have a great night. And, and they went off into the bush. I still don't know what they look like. Have no clue, never saw them. I just knew I prayed for them over a river. But they heard there was a preacher there. They heard, and they came for prayer. And for whatever reason, they saw my car coming at 1.30 in the morning. So when I got up, sir, sir. <laughs> the moment people find out what God's doing with you, they're gonna start to come to you for help. We heard how the Lord helped you. We need help from the same thing. 
We heard how God healed your marriage. We heard how God raised you up off that bed of affliction. Can you pray for us? Now, this is what happened. Go, go to chapter five of Mark's gospel and look at verse 21. And when Jesus passed over again by ship to the other side, much people gathered unto him and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, my little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay your hands upon her that she may be healed and she will live. So why, why is he there? He's there because he heard that Jesus is the one that heals. And he knew that if I can just get Jesus to my daughter, she's going to be okay. And Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. Now, obviously we know the story of what happened with his daughter, how God raised her up. But there is a interruption that takes place on the way to Jairus' house. In verse 25, a certain woman which had an issue of blood for 12 years. That means she suffered for 12 years with an issue of blood which is a terrible thing because you just can't imagine how weak you are most of the time, just bleeding all the time, losing blood. And then it suffered many things and many physicians, that means she'd gone to all the doctors and was spent all that she had, all of her money was being spent, was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, the Bible says she came in the press behind and touched his garment, for she said, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be whole. So I want you to picture this, and I teach this in a series that I do on the subject of the anointing, because again, people don't understand the ministry of Jesus. They didn't understand that it wasn't just a person with a message. He was the message. Are you with me? So he was the message. It was the word that came walking down the road on the way to Jairus' house. It was the word. It was the word of God in the flesh. The word came walking down the road. That's why when you get the word in you, it's going to be what comes out of you. Are you with me? Where do you put the word? Into your spirit. Are you gonna have a problem with your head? Many times your head will try to override what the word that's in your spirit is saying. But you have to learn to tell your head to shut up. Can you say amen? And allow the word to rise up big on the inside of you. That's when you know, I'm gonna pray for you right now. When I lay my hands on you, you're gonna be healed. Not because of you, but because of him and what his word has declared. Can you say amen? So Jesus is walking, the word is walking on his way to Jairus' house. And this little woman also heard. Jairus heard of Jesus, that's why he came to Jesus. The woman heard about Jesus. And, and, the, and this is so powerful. She came in the press behind. That means there was a lot of people around about him. She pushed through the crowd. If you're gonna see a breakthrough in your life, you have to push when it comes to the things of God and what Jesus is doing, you have to push through. Amen. It's like God's waiting to hear from the individual that wants to grab a hold of what he has. He heard me all the way in Africa all those years ago. Are you with me? When you get hungry, when you get thirsty, when you get desperate, a person that, you know, I'm gonna to come to the healing school, but I can only make it one day. You're not desperate. I'm coming, to, I'm coming to the conference. I can only make a night. Stay away. 
Watch online. I can promise you if Jesus were living physically in the earth today, I wouldn't be watching anything online. Are you with me? I'd find out where he was and I'd get right there and I'd do whatever it takes. I'd push through the crowd. I'd do whatever it takes. Can you say amen? Why? Because that's your part. God does his part, but he waits for you to do your part. Your part is the pushing through. Your part is the hunger. Your part is the thirsting. Your part is, I'm gonna, you set your faith. I'm going to touch the hem of his garment, which is what she did. Many other people were touching him, but they were not placing a demand upon him. Remember we talked about the pool of Bethesda? Huh? Five porches. Jesus comes right in there and only one dude gets healed. The rest get nothing. I want to almost go, what's wrong with these people? Why you? I would go, hey, you, you over there, you come here and do to me what you just did to that guy. But they were too busy looking at their man. They missed the miracle. And it's the same way when you are not focused on Jesus, you miss out on what God has for you. Every person that came here, I'm going to go to church this morning. I'm going to receive from heaven. Every person that came here with that attitude are going to receive something. If you haven't already received, you'll receive something not from man, but you'll receive something from heaven. And you place a demand. You know, when you go to a restaurant and you open the menu, you're looking to see what's available and then you tell them I'm like this, that, that, what's happening? You place an amount upon the menu. You place an amount on the restaurant's ability to feed you with the food they advertise that they would feed you with. If I'm eating Chinese food, I don't want them to bring me Mexican food. I love Mexican food, but I, if I came to eat Chinese, I want to eat Chinese. Just leave off the bats from Wuhan and everything will be fine. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that out. <laughs> I'd be him myself. I'd leave off the bat soup. Thank you. But you go to a Mexican restaurant, you don't expect Chinese food. And then you open the menu to see what they have. Well, when we open up our Bible, we see the menu Amen. of what God has. And I don't know about you, I'm not going to listen to another chef trying to run the restaurant down of the menu, the main menu that I read, just because he wrote a supplemental book to the menu. Hello. Not interested. So I can just picture this little woman thinking to herself, if I can just get to Jesus, I'm going to be healed. But if I get to Jesus, I'm going to be in trouble because under the law, anyone that had an issue of blood, if they were caught in a public place, they were to be taken out and stoned. That means the Pharisees and the Sadducees had rocks and they're going to stone you to death. But when you're so desperate, you don't care anymore. It doesn't matter if I get a rock on my head, I'm dying anyway, I can't live like this. 12 years, I've spent all my money, I've been to every doctor under the sun, and I've tried everything and I'm not getting any better, I'm getting worse. But I heard about this miracle worker from Galilee, how he turned water to wine, how he raises the dead, he opens the eyes, the blind. Uh, and if I can just touch, I, I don't even want him to make a big scene about it. I don't even want him to put his hand on me. I don't want him even to pray a prayer over me or even mention my name. In actual fact, he doesn't need to know who I am. I'm going to slip through the crowd and I'm just going to touch the hem of his garment. And when I do, I'm going to be whole. What was she doing? She was setting her point of contact in the place where the anointing would be released. Yes. She had no clue what was about to happen to her.
If any one of those Pharisees had a found her there with an issue of blood, they would have taken out and stoned her. Don't tell me they weren't looking. Remember, they caught the woman caught in adultery. There was always some people probably waking up every day. Let's see who we can stone today. We're going to find someone. I think some of them work for the city of Tampa. <laughs> some of these people now work in government in America. Hello. But she was desperate. That's why I always ask people, how desperate are you? How desperate are you? How hungry are you? How thirsty are you? She came in the press. She pushed through the crowd. And what does the scripture say? Straightway, the fountain of her blood was right up. She felt in her body she was healed of that plague. Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about on the press and said, who touched my clothes? And the disciples said, Master, thou seest the multitude throng thee and says, thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, daughter, or as you would say, daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Now, uh, in Matthew, it's Matthew 9, 20 through 22. And behold, a woman which was diseased with the issue of blood 12 years came behind, touched the hem of his garment, for she said within herself, she said within herself, if I may touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, daughter, be a good comfort, your faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. And then the passage I just read to you from Mark 5, 25 through 34. And then Luke chapter 8. And a woman having issue of blood, which has spent all of her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him, touched the board of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stanched or stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me? And when all the night Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee and says thou who touched me but Jesus said someone has touched me for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me I perceive the anointing virtue has gone out of me and when the woman saw that she was not hid she came trembling and falling down before him and declared unto him before all the people for what cause she touched him and how she was healed immediately and he said daughter be of good comfort your faith has made thee whole go in peace that's why the whole attack against the church in this hour really to stop people from even coming to a place where they could even get health help you to go to hospitals even now these people needing uh, transplants they can't go unless they have vaccines if people can't get to see their loved ones still still Forget about what you think is happening in Florida or some counties here, but the rest of the world still have lost their minds. Are you with me? And then they closed the church. The city of Melbourne just released all the documents and said, you can go to, they will allow unvaccinated people to at least shop for food and a couple of other things and there's certain what they call essential, but the church is not. You won't be able to go to a theater, movie, a ball game or church or anything without a passport. That's a city of five million people. And they're implementing that in Australia, which is supposed to be a first world country. What shocked me more than anything is that the Australian people just accept it. Not just the people, the, the, the ministers, the preachers.
Because that means people can't come and touch the hem of his garment. Well, you can touch the hem if you get the stick. You get the sharp point and then you can come touch the hem of his garment. But the very reason why you're touching the hem of his garment is so you can be healed. Now you're telling me that I can't, the, the hem of his garment is not sufficient. That I need the hem of his garment plus. Hello. Do you realize that previous FDA commissioners are all now heads of Pfizer, Moderna, and all these companies? How does a commissioner of the FDA that's supposed to protect the American people, when they finish their term, go and become heads of these vaccine companies? And we must just accept everything they say. Uh, no. No. And then you want to belittle the church. You want to mock the church. You want to write the church off. You want to mock those that preach the word of God. You, it's one thing if you are religious out there and you don't believe in healing and miracles, that's fine. Go on into oblivion. Choose whatever you want. Go and get stuck five times for all I care. You can mock God all you want to, but I believe the word of God. I believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Can you say amen? He has never changed his power, his anointing. That virtue is still flowing from the hem of his garment today. And when hungry people come, when you come to God, that there is no other option. There is no other way that either you are healed or you will die. When you come to him with desperation, you will see the hand of God. You will see the miraculous. You will see the power of God. God will come through for you. Hallelujah. So all these alternatives, you got God here, but then you have this, 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 this. If this, this, and this, and this, and all that would have helped, then how come did she suffer many things and many physicians? Pray tell. How come did she spend all her money trying to get better? How many people here with the uplift of the hand would say, Pastor, I've suffered many things and many physicians. Wave your hand at me right now. Wave your hand. Who's been a doctor after doctor and they couldn't help you? Come on, wave your hand. We've been. Who spent a lot of money, a lot of medicine, that all you did was pee it out? <laughs> Who here yeah, among us had a situation, of course you healed now, but you had a situation, you went to every doctor, you tried every medicine, and for five years you couldn't see any breakthrough. Wave your hand. So imagine 12 years. You're not gonna tell me that I have to write the word of God off and that medical science has now taken the place of the word of God when it comes to Jesus and when it comes to me practicing what I believe. Can you say amen? amen. Somebody said, I don't believe it, that's fine. You worship a cow, I eat it. You're free to do whatever you want to, but I'm free to do whatever I want to as well. And the people that come here to the River Church are free to believe the same way if they so desire. No one is forced to believe any way. No one is here by coercion. No one is here because you were put pressure that if you didn't come, we were gonna hunt you down. The only people that have to be here on Sunday is our staff. Are you with me? Because they work in the ministry. But the rest of you, it's your choice. Who chose to come to church today? So I know people think I'm making a thing of nothing, but I'm not because what they're trying to do is say, oh yeah, well all that, you can say that, 
the woman had the issue of blood and gone to all the doctors, spent all that she had, wasn't getting any better, but was getting worse. But, 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 we in the 21st century now, and that's just from the Bible. No, but, but, but. That is available today. Can you say amen? amen? If you understand the ministry of Jesus. If you don't understand the ministry of Jesus, then you just think it's past. That's why one of the first things they came out with back last year, back in the month of March, or the, when it started, the 15 days to slow whatever, was that you could not lay hands on anybody. Well, that's what they did. Well, Jesus didn't lay hands on her. No, but she laid hands on him. I see everything in pictures. I could just see the little woman coming. I could see her saying within herself, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be whole. And then pushing through the crowd. And the Bible says when she touched him, virtue, the word virtue is dynamis, power flowed out of Jesus. He felt virtue flow from him and she felt it flow into her. The only way to describe that is if you go back to your house and unscrew the light bulb in your bedside table lamp, put your finger in, you'll feel virtue flow into you. It was the same way. It's not hocus pocus stuff. Not some play play thing. Over the years I've had many people came to me, they come to the meetings, they said I don't believe it was real and I stood in the line and I didn't know if you laid hands on me or whatever but when I woke up I was looking at the ceiling. That's why in many situations, I don't even touch the people on purpose. So they didn't think I was pushing them over or whatever, but just pray. Because there's no distance in the realm of the spirit. As the man, the centurion came to Jesus, said, speak the word only and my servant will be healed. He just spoke the word. Be healed. That was what Jesus did. Be whole. Be loosed. So you're the one that placed the demand on the anointing. You. And when you plug in, it's just like electricity. That dunamis went through the body of the woman, the issue of blood, immediately. Straightway, the Bible says the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body she was healed of that plague. Immediately, immediately. And Jesus felt it. He turned about and said, who touched my clothes? Who touched me? You've heard me say this before. You don't walk in a crowd of people walking around going, who touched me? 
Somebody's touching me. Who's touching me? Stop touching me. <laughs> Judas probably said, Lord, check your wallet to see if it's still there. <laughs> Thomas probably said, Lord, I doubt anybody touched you. But it was more than just a touch. A touch, you can feel if somebody touches you. A bump, a touch. But this was more. This was a demand that was placed. And she drew on that anointing and it went into her body and she was healed. Well, I'm here to tell you today that that anointing is still here today as it was 2,000 years ago. Can you say amen? And that anointing is not just on one or two or three or four people. That anointing is to be sent through his body, through you, through his hands, his feet, his mouthpiece. When you understand the ministry of Jesus, if you don't understand the ministry of Jesus, somebody can be right around you and they'll have a heart attack and you'll just sit there and go, oh, it's terrible. What's wrong? Oh, they're having a heart attack. Oh. We'll have to wait for the ambulance. When you understand the ministry of Jesus, you jump up, you run over there. In the name of Jesus right now. I put my hands upon it. Everybody else freaks out in the restaurant, in the, in the airport. They all look around. Who is this person? You don't care about that. You're there to do the work of Jesus. Can you say amen? Yeah. So you just kneel down right there where the person's having a heart attack and you put your hand on them in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. I command this heart to be healed now. You know what, do, you know what does that? A person who understands the ministry of Jesus. A person who doesn't understand the ministry of Jesus just stands like this. Another one bites the dust. Another one gone, and another one gone, and another one bites the dust. I notice people could take trips to the restroom here at the river. It's like they go on a vacation. They come back two months later carrying suitcases. <laughs> Boy, you must have had a problem. Step right over here. Step right over here. Lift your hands as you do. The power of God comes on you. The transference of the anointing. Now people are nervous. They don't know if they should even go to the restroom. Go. Just don't camp out and have a barbecue somewhere. Do what you need to do and get back. <laughs> Say this off me, the word of God declares that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. How many earthen vessels do we have here? Well, that treasure has to be poured out. 
But if you don't understand the ministry of Jesus, you say, well, who am I? I'm nothing. I, I just, yeah, well, all of us, we are nothing. But great is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And Jesus even said, he said, it's not I the doer the work, but my father within me, he doeth the work. This next week, everywhere you go, you're gonna do the works of Jesus. You're gonna be his hand and his feet and his mouthpiece. Everywhere you go, you're gonna see people saved, healed, delivered, set free, and the power of the enemy is gonna be broken. And I always know people don't, they, they know the religious thing, but they don't know what we teach here. Because the person could be, could be have a heart attack, fall down a, Lord, <laughs> Father, we pray now. <laughs> Shut up and get out of the way. <laughs> a person that knows says, in the name of Jesus. You know, if somebody's dying, they don't have time for you to give a long rigmarole. Get with the program. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. Take authority. Yes. Well, how do I do that? You don't take it if you don't have it. But if you have it on the inside of you, if you have the word of the Lord on the inside of you, then when you open your mouth, it will come out. It will come out. Not as religion, it will come out. It will be as the very words of the Lord Jesus Christ that will come life, life. We speak life, healing, deliverance, blessing. Can you say amen? amen. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody said, well, what will other people say and I'll get kicked out? of?" Look, again, you're gonna take what God's word says and believe it, or you're gonna worry about what other people say. I had to call somebody yesterday and rebuke him by telephone. They said, I'm recording all this is going to the media. I started to laugh. I said, oh, I said, are you on crack? As if I care what the media thinks. I said, first of all, it's illegal to record anybody in the state of Florida if you don't notify them that they are being recorded, number one. But number two, you think I care what you, you take whatever you want. I'll rebuke you one more time. worried about the media. Do I look worried about the media? Please. Well, we don't want to go there and do that. Maybe they'll get offended and then they'll speak to, it'll close doors for the ministry because we're really trying to build a great ministry. Uh, we don't want to be seen as being one of those. One of those what? <laughs> well, people would think I'm one of those faith healers. <sighs> let, me, let me think. Uh, doubt, preacher, faith healer. Which one would I want to be associated with? Seriously? You can put words together and you can allow that to block you from doing whatever God's called you to do. When it's all said and done, they attacked Jesus. They said that he was hanging out with the devil. They, they, they said that Jesus was of the devil. He didn't say, no, I don't want to be associated with those people. He said, I've come to do the work and the will of my father. He didn't care. It didn't bother him what people said. There's no one that's been attacked greater or criticized greater than Jesus. Even to this day. But the world needs him. The world needs him now more than ever. I was watching this last week when the oldest man ever to go into space was blast off, William Shatner. And uh, they blasted him off, 90 years old. 
And of course, he's acted in movies going to, you know, I guess he got beamed up. <laughs> but he was, they were, got in all, it was like 10 minutes. They went up, they were there for three minutes, then came down. But all, he was just blown away by what he saw. And when he got down, Jeff Bezos met him, shook hands, and, he, and, and all he could talk about, and Bezos was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is what Shatner was saying. He said, the blue is life, the black is death. He said, we broke through the blue and you looked out into death and you looked down on life. And that's all the old man talked about. That's all he talked about. It was like he had a revelation. This is life, that's death. I prayed for his salvation the moment I saw that. Are you with me? His God leaves everything, comes to the earth, takes on human flesh to come into the blue, to come and touch us, to walk the streets, to walk the towns and the villages for the ultimate purpose of going to the cross. So that, that power that was kept in a tabernacle made with the hands of man would then be able to come out and live in our hearts. And religion hates it. Religion wants to stop it. Religion wants to use terminology to trap you up, to talk semantics and argue verbiage and this phraseology and the Greek and the Hebrew and all this kind of stuff when really in essence all God's looking for is people that will just take the word of God and believe it and say yes Lord I believe and if you want to use me you can take my hands my feet my mouth I'm going to go I'll go where you want me to go I'll do what you want me to do I'll say what you want me to say I'll be what you want me to be I'll lay hands on the sick it's not my reputation it's yours it's not my word it's your word it's not I don't really care what anybody thinks about me. I only care about what you think. And on that day, you'll hear the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou under the joy of the Lord. Because the majority of people here today have been touched by him. All those that have been touched by the Lord, wave your hand at me. We've got to give that away. We have to give that away. You don't need a platform. You don't need a stage. You don't need to be on television. You don't need to be known. You just start where you are. You take your hands and, and you just and you just and you and you and you lay your hands upon those that he brings you to Barras People will criticize you, but it doesn't matter. Just keep doing that. Keep doing that. Keep doing what Jesus says do. The devil's always going to try to push you off, get you shut up, get you to back off. But you're going to do the works of your father. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. 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 Let me close with this. You know, I've, over the years, I've often said, Lord, man, if I could get everybody touched, I just, you know. And it's like the Lord said, do you think I didn't have that same feeling myself? Baba says he went to Nazareth, could do no mighty work because of unbelief. So he is Jesus. Well, what, what happens then, Pastor? You just keep moving, keep going on. Well, what happens if you pray for somebody and they drop dead? Next. 
Next. Next. Just keep doing the works of Jesus. I want every person under the sound of my voice sitting here under this pavilion and those watching in their homes, if you're a Christian and call yourself a believer, you are needed now more than ever. There are people bound by fear. They're bound by the enemy. They said that in um, the military, suicides are 22% of people coming back from, from the field, 22%. There's not enough doctors. There's not enough medicine to heal hurting humanity from the problems that they're facing. But there's one Jesus, and that one Jesus will take care and will do the work if you let him rise big on the inside of you and touch through you. This week, thousands of people are going to be touched because of your hands and your mouth and your feet. This week, thousands of people will be touched in the Central Florida region because of you. Look at your hands. It's in these hands that you hold a miracle. If you will do it, God will confirm his word. You'll never be ashamed. He'll always come and back you up. Some things you'll see instantaneously because that's how he does it. Other things you'll see gradually and other things over a period of time. I prayed for people, took 18 months and then they were fine. I don't know why. If it was me, I'd just zap them and get it all done at the same moment. But 18 months, they just started getting better, 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 and come right out of the wheelchair, went back to normal. Took 18 months. Every bit of sickness and disease left their body. Why does God do stuff that way? I have no clue. But I just know. He said, lay hands upon the sick. So that means husband can lay hands upon a wife. Wife can lay hands upon a husband. Parents can lay hands upon your children. You can lay hands on your neighbor. Some said, my dog's sick. Bring the dog. Put your hand on the dog. Lay your hands on your dog. Somebody said, I've got a sick horse. Lay hands on the horse. Amen. Somebody said, my goldfish is not doing well. Chase it around the bowl. Look, you either believe in the ministry of Jesus or you don't. What is your option in this hour that we're living in? There is no option. It's, the plan is to make this thing even worse. The plan is for the fifth wave now, the fifth wave of COVID. Dr. Finocchio just said this. He said, if you do not get vaccinated, then you are making way for the fifth wave. The fifth wave. I've got a wave for you, Pinocchio. I have a wave for you. The wave is actually...
One touch. One touch. Just one touch. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you that sitting here on this field in this pavilion today are miracle workers. Sitting on this field today are people that have the healing power of God in their life and in their hands. And that from this pavilion, they will go out. Every person that they lay hands upon this week shall be touched. People will be healed, saved, delivered, and set free. Thank you, Lord, that we have an understanding of your ministry, that it's not us. It's not us. It's not I that doeth the work, but my Father within me, he doeth the work. And we thank you for it, and we give you praise, and we give you honor, and we give you glory. And I expect many, many miracles in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I'm believing the Lord by next Sunday to hear testimonies of people that went out from here that have never, listen, there are people that are winning souls for the first time, but there's going to be people that are going to be laying hands on the sick for the very first time this next week. And God's going to give you miracles. You say, why? Because you understand the ministry of Jesus. There is no end to this. I better bring it to a close, otherwise I'll be all afternoon. Study the Gospels. Go to Jesus' crusade meetings. Listen to everything he says. Watch whatever he he does. Do you know how many thousands of times that I've seen the woman with the issue of blood healed? A release. A release of the anointing. Through your life. Blockages are being removed right now. That thing that was stopping the flow of the anointing is being removed right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Some of you are still stuck in your head. You too much in your head? You too much in your head, Fred? You trying to analyze everything. You, 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 it's simple. It's not complicated. It's simple. That's why children can grab a hold of it. The little ones can grab a hold of it. They can understand it. I mean, you you just sense the tangible anointing on you right now, right now. That's his presence.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, blessed Jesus. Just everyone, just grab hands across this place. I was going to wrap it up before we go to communion, but I felt one more thing. One should put a thousand to flight, and two should put ten thousand. Let your dunamis flood this place. Let your dunamis flood this house. Let your dunamis flood this place, Lord. Healing and miracles. Healing and miracles. Healing and miracles, signs and wonders. Healing and miracles, signs and wonders. Healing and miracles, signs and wonders. The anointing to set the captives free. People that are being set free will be set free from mental problems. Everywhere you go, depression will go. Depression will go. Bondage will go. Addictions will go. I hear the Lord saying this, if you believe me, I'll confirm it. I'll confirm my word. If you step out of the boat, walk on the water, I'll confirm it. I'll confirm it. I'll confirm it. Jesus. I'll confirm it. It doesn't matter, a bank, the airport, an Uber car, a school, a university, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what office it is, he'll confirm it. He'll confirm it. He will confirm it. You see, there's a lot of ministers, listen to me carefully, that would want to make it all about themselves. I'm preaching a message that totally takes me out of the equation. Because let me tell you right now, I never for one moment said, do you have to get the people here to come and hear me? I'm telling you that God wants to put his word on the inside of you. His word's got to come out of your mouth. People are going to hear the word of the Lord coming out of your mouth. They're going to be touched because of your hands that's going to be laying hands on the sick and going to be casting out devils. We don't have enough time for this to be resting upon one individual. This has to rest upon the whole body. So stop writing yourself out of the equation. Stop saying I'm insignificant. Forget about all that nonsense. Get with the program. God needs to use you and he needs to use you now. People are hurting now. People are dying now. In the name that is above every name, I charge you. I charge you to take this mandate 
of the Great Commission. I charge you to go from this place and lay hands on every sick person you find. I charge you. I command you in Jesus' name. And God will confirm. God will confirm. Now lift your hands and thank him. God will confirm. God will confirm. God will confirm. God will confirm. Just close your eyes across the field. I want to give an invitation here. Today, most are children of God already and giving your life to the Lord. Please, the only people moving are the workers. But if you're on this field today and you've never given your life to Jesus or you're watching my way of television and you've never given your life to him, today I want to give you an invitation to come and surrender your life to him today. What would happen if today was your last day on the earth? You went home, put your head on your pillow in the middle of the night, you breathed out your last breath. Where would you go? Where would you spend eternity? I want you to know there's a heaven again and a hell to shun. Today, today, if you humble yourself, you can receive what heaven has. You might never have another opportunity this very day, your life could be required of you. Maybe you came to the service today and you gave a life to the Lord in days gone by, but you've grown cold. You're not serving God like you should. You've allowed the things of the world to come in. You've lost your first love, the joy, the passion that you once had. Maybe it's something hidden that no one could see. Pride, unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousy, anger, lust, the hidden things that clog the heart of man. But today you say, I want free. I want free of this. I'm coming out. Maybe it's something outward that everyone could see and now the enemy uses it against you to keep in a place of guilt and condemnation. You feel like, well, God will never use me because of this and that and the other thing. The devil's a liar and God's a God of a second chance and a new beginning. Will you surrender your life to him afresh? Maybe you here today you were serving God, but a storm came against your life. A sudden divorce, a bankruptcy, the loss of a loved one, a sudden illness, the betrayal of a close friend, the loss of a job. Something happened that rocked your world. But today you say, I'm coming back. I want to fall in love with Jesus all over again. If you mean business with God, God means business with you. Will you surrender? afresh to him today. Maybe you're on this field or you're watching by way of television. You love the Lord. You gave your life to him, but you're not sure of your salvation. The devil's always lying to you, telling you that you're not saved. But today you say, I want to know. I want to know beyond a shadow of a doubt. I'm a child of God. If this is you and you fit into any one of these categories, I want to pray with you and for you. Right where you are, quickly. Put your hand up right now. Say, pray for me. God bless you. 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 Raise up high and say, yes, me. Yes, me. Yes, me. Yes, me. I'm not leaving the place the same way I came. But today is my day of freedom and liberty. I'm leaving you a changed person. I'm leaving you transformed by the power of the blood of Jesus. Once you've raised, you can put it down. I want you to look at me, if you would, please. I'm over on the far side here. If you didn't raise your hand, but you want to be included in the prayer, we're going to pray right now. Quickly, slip your hand up and say, include me. Anybody else? I see your hand, sir. God bless you. Anybody else? Raise up a high and say, yes, that's me. Yes, that's me. This middle section, you didn't raise your hand, but want to be included. Quickly, slip your hand up and say, include me. Right over there, lady in the red. Anybody else? Another hand over there, another hand at the back. Anybody else? Slip it up higher. Say, yes, me. Yes, that's me. 
And then this side, you didn't raise your hand, but want to be included quickly. Put your hand up right now. I see your hand already, sir. Thank you. Anybody else? I want everybody that raised your hand to stand quickly. Stand, if you would, please. Stand. I'm going to ask you to come from where you are. Come stand right here. We're going to lead you in a prayer. Come. Come now. Turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me. The world behind me. Cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back. You can take the whole world. Give me Jesus. You can take the whole world. But give me Jesus. You can take the whole world. But give me Jesus. turning back no turning back now let me just say this when I look out over the field I look at thousands upon thousands of people because of who you're going to touch this next week As you already heard, 9,000 people last week were prayed with. So I'm not exaggerating when I say thousands of people will be touched. And this doesn't even mean that you have to go out of your way. This just means that you en route some way and then the occasion arises and you pray for them. Amen. Stretch your hand out towards these precious ones. I want you that are standing right here in the front, if you just close your eyes and raise your right hand to heaven, that's where your help comes from. We're going to pray one prayer. One prayer fits all. If you mean business with God, God means business with you. I want you to pray with me right now. Pray this out loud. Say, Father, I come to you in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Lord, you said in your word, if I confess with my mouth Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. And I believe in my heart that God has raised you from the dead. I will be saved. So Father, right now, I confess Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart right now. Take out the stony heart Put in a heart of flesh. Wash me. Cleanse me. Change me. Fill me. Use me. Let me never be the same again. 
I turned my back on the world and I turned my back on sin and I follow you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. Thank you that on the third day you rose for me and thank you that you're coming back again for me. From this day on, I'll never be the same again. I confess Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He is my Lord and my Savior. And right now, by faith, in the finished work of the cross, and by the shed blood of Jesus, I'm saved. Thank him right now. Father, give this man ability to pray for the sick, cast out devils and use them in a powerful way. Now, Father, seal them now by your blood and by your spirit that on that day not one would be missing. Raise them up to be mighty men and women of God and use them to impact this generation, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for watching today on YouTube. Please press the subscribe button and also the notification button and like and get the word out so others can watch.